Chapter 2. Whatever you do, don't flip it. As driving lessons go, this one was a doozy. Don't hammer on the accelerator or you'll flip the vehicle over. This happened six times last year, according to the usual driver. Don't sit in the one spot idling for more than 60 seconds, otherwise the cabin will start to fill with methanol fumes and you'll be bawling in your helmet and you'll have no idea why. This switch here locks the back tyres up and helps with tight turns, and if you get out of control, we will shut you down remotely. Got it? Good luck. Wait. Welcome to my sub five minute lesson in how to drive a monster truck. The hilarious part was that I wasn't supposed to be in this particular truck to begin with. The monster trucks had a big show at the showgrounds on Saturday, and in the interest of publicity and noise making, my radio co-host Alex and I were asked if we'd like to compete in a monster truck drag race. We'd each get a medium sized monster truck, medium in engine capacity more than physical dimensions, they're still monsters after all, and once given the signal, we'd race in opposite directions, circle a nearby witch's hat, and race back. First one to cross the line gets to hang plenty of shit on the other on the show, and don't forget to see the professionals do it this Saturday, gates open at 6, etc, etc. Well, that was the plan. Arriving at the showgrounds that Thursday morning, we were slightly surprised to see a grand total of zero monster trucks making a monster truck drag race a touch on the difficult side. Change your plan, boys, the promoter side. One of the trucks I was planning to use for this has blown a head gasket and is out of action. Considering how much it cost to fix my first car's head gasket back in the day, I shuddered at the bill of doing the same with the monster truck. But it's okay. I've put a call out and the boys are picking up my truck at the moment. We'll get you in for a spin in that one. And the fastest lap wins it. It took a few moments for it to dawn on me from previous conversations that the truck he was talking about now his pride and joy was his competition-level monster truck that travelled the world crushing cars with mad abandon, complete with 1,600 horsepower methanol fueled Merlin plane engine. Forget Monsters Inc. As monsters go, this thing had a complete and utter take-no-prisoners attitude, and this guy was about to throw the keys. Well, the start button over to two random radio announcers. Oh dear. Shortly after, a big semi-trailer truck arrived with a yellow juggernaut on board, sending a chill down everyone from the station's spines, on account of the sheer size of this war machine. And then, they switched it on. Now, the showgrounds here in town have a few giant sheds for the Sunday markets and other events throughout the year, and I swear that the first rev of this animal ripped right through them all, before echoing back like a furious thunderclap. I was surprised the noise didn't tear through the clouds and send a downpour our way, or that the gods suddenly didn't appear to request that we turn down the noise. And we were supposed to take this thing for a quick spin? A quick flip of the coin netted me the first spin in the monster of all monsters. And suddenly, I was sweating like crazy. And that was before they threw on the steel plate-like racing jacket and helmet. I climbed the steps, making sure I completely avoided the exhaust, which would apparently melt skin off faster than you could say what was that, and proceeded to get my helmeted head stuck in the roll cage. Clever me. Once I freed myself and crawled in, I discovered that a monster truck is the complete opposite of the time-travelling TARDIS from the TV series Doctor Who. It's huge on the outside, with barely any room inside, once you put all the buttons, switches, and a padded-up radio announcer in there. Being that high up in the air also makes visibility a complete challenge, unless you're looking head-on at a similar-sized truck or maybe a car pile. Once strapped in nice and tight, the quick lesson began before he fired up the engine, rendering any further conversation completely useless. Happily, he explained that he wouldn't tell Alex about the switch, which locks up the back wheels, allowing for tighter cornering, which he said should hopefully give me the edge, provided I didn't stuff anything else up. Well, here's hoping. He flicked the switch and drowned the entire world out with furious roaring before yelling something I completely missed. Good luck. Don't press the red button. Nice knowing you. No idea. Before jumping out and leaving the control of the truck from hell in the hands of someone who prefers his seats only a few inches off the ground and his engines at a noise level able to be talked over. The starter waved and I just lightly tapped the pedal to get my lap going, only to find the beast raced forward faster than a turbo-fed cheetah on steroids and because of it, I almost broke the steering wheel with my white-knuckled grip of fear. With the truck's all-or-nothing attitude combined with the visibility of the skyline and not much else, getting this battleship around anything was a challenge, considering I only had a vague idea of where I was supposed to turn. Happily though, as I flicked on the lock switch, the beast slid around perfectly, and I lightly tapped the pedal again to get it rumbling to the next turn. The second lap was a hell of a lot smoother than the first, but that's saying something when attempting to pilot something the size of a house that has you shaking like a violent washing machine with every rev. I kind of guessed where the finishing line was and hit the brakes, discovering that I was still shaking with excitement in my seat 
even with the engine off. No hitting the kill switch, no remote shut off, I'd made it with all my favourite body parts intact. Hooray! I completely missed Alex's turn though. Instead, happily explaining, once my hearing returned to nearby mates, the glory of the wheel lock switch. How I couldn't see anything, and my god was that the best thing ever. I was still shaking roughly an hour later though, back in the studio looking at all the pictures. The show on Saturday was amazing, and the experts made it look so easy. Although I'm sure my father-in-law Barry got a bit tired of me talking about the yellow truck every five minutes while we were there though. And there's this button, and it does this. For the record, Alex beat me by a second. But hey, I got to drive a 1600 horsepower snorting monster truck and live to tell the tale. And let's be honest here, we're probably not going to find ourselves in a challenge of that magnitude ever again, so I'm very, very glad that I put my hand up for this one. Thankfully, I didn't have to lend a hand to fix the original broken one either as there's been more than one time where using tools have gotten away from me.